Hey everybody, welcome back to more Space Marine. I am still Negroth, and today with me I have Congress. Hello! Hey! We've, we've lost the jump pack, this game is no longer fun. Yeah, they uh, they had a pretty good reason. Um, we're, we're in a confined space. I, 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 I really hate the justification sometimes. It's like, you're out of, uh, what was it, Prometheum? Yeah, space right. oil. You're out, of, you're out of fuel, dump it. Like, oh, couldn't we find more? No. There's no more fuel on the planet. <laughs> there, There's a lot of random cables, though. It's yeah, like, just hook that up. No! Doesn't work! Yeah, well, well, thank, I'm pretty sure these little electrical surges are actually, like, wah, like, pumping through the, uh, the cables themselves. I actually, think that's the only explanation for it, because what the hell else are they powering? I, I don't know. I guess the cables could be running to the gun, but I assume the gun has its own power source, if anything. Yeah, it's still operating. You'd think if, if a rock came through and just demolished everything, it would stop operating, but it clearly has not, and you fucked up that Gretchen. Yeah, I, uh, well, they shouldn't be running away from me. Orcs are supposed to be aggressive. Yeah, stand and fight, you pansies. Yeah, this uh, that's that's going to be one of many situations where you're just kind of like, why are the orcs running away from me instead of fighting? But yeah, I uh, yet again, just to summarize this audio log, uh, a trans mechanic who is basically air traffic control, I suppose, uh, for the planet is uh, basically maybe he spotted something, maybe he didn't. Uh, well, obviously it was rocks, and uh, basically nobody believes him. And I guess that was kind of a bad thing, because now they're all they're all dead. Every time there's something. And the two week span it's been since the planet was invaded. Yeah, this is got this is either the most poorly defended planet ever, or like the most powerful war band ever. It's swarming with It's really it's hard to say. You'd think there'd be tech priests inside those buildings, but guess not. No, there was a humorous line in the last video with like the guardsmen going. You know, damn it, this is broken. Where are all the tech priests? And I guess their corpses just dissolve or something. Uh, are we? I don't know. Orcs eat them. And no, Janet. But uh, hey, we uh, do we? This is actually a weapon specifically made up for Space Marine. Yeah, the tooltip said it was experimental, which doesn't make any effing sense in the universe. But whatever, let's roll with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we I think we were... To, I, I don't know if I was discussing it with you or someone else, but basically, whenever the Adeptus mechanic the Mechanicus doesn't really invent things, they more find relics or blueprints from the distant past, and over time they decide, you know, well, this is safe, we should use this, or evil, and they kind of lock it away forever. Yeah, I mean... The Space Marines have a vehicle, it's called a Razorback. It's like their trans it's like their Rhino APC, but it has some more guns on the back of it. And they've been using it for like four thousand years, and they're still superstitious about it because they haven't been using it for ten thousand years. Yeah, I, re I remember reading about how when the when the when they get the judges specify like basically there is the the razorback is like the base chassis put the charge on one of the and then they'll put different weaponry on it to make it different types of vehicles but to determine which vehicle it becomes the the adeptus mechanist talks to the omnisaya like they communicate to this invisible spirit to figure out what the what the chassis will become it's because so, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not so much that, well, we need, like, more tanks. It's like, will the gods allow us this huge-ass tank? But then sometimes, you know, I, I, uh, I remember, I think it was, like, the Redeemer. There's just certain, like, super heavy tanks where sometimes Space Marines are just like, you know, we're gonna fucking die here. We need something. And they'll just kind of start strapping flamethrowers and huge-ass guns on things. And at that point, they just kind of say, Um, we're bigger than you, Adeptus Mechanus. And the, and the Mechanicus are just kind of like, uh, alright. It was clearly like, divinely inspired or something. Yeah. Well, so it's because you have like a nine-foot-tall guy with a huge booming voice yelling at you. 
but yeah, I guess uh, I guess I should quickly explain the the very in depth and well thought out plan. Um, you know, Le Leonidas or Leandros. Leandros finally had like a reasonably good idea, which was, hey, look, here's uh, here's some melter charges. Let's strap it onto one of the shells and you know blow up the gun barrel. That uh, the primary drawback of that is. Uh, well, the Mechanicus would be very pissed off at you because they probably couldn't rebuild this cannon. This cannon, yeah. is, this cannon is probably like millennia old. So I you... don't think it would be unfair to consider that this gun has been there since it was built, and they probably can't replace it. So yeah. destroying it is probably not the thing to do if you want to be friends with the tech priests. Yeah, and will the pretty much this game just completely throws the idea of trying to be nice to the tech priests out the window? As, yeah, I mean clearly the space brains don't give a shit, and even the old gruff captain dude is like, "That was a good idea." Pats him on the head. Yeah, it's it's great. The, I'm, also, they, the first they, acknowledgement he's had in the plot so far. Yeah, just a little pat on the head, a little doggy biscuit. You you did good. For once. But yeah, here's uh, here's yet another audio log of. Uh, hey, did you know that everyone else is dead except Mira? Well, nothing of consequence. Oh boy. Ah, Captain screams and dies. I but clearly care about the fate of these people I've never seen. They they are all they. they ah, where'd that come from? Yeah, yeah, this area can be. Uh, rather unexpected, because, you know, we've had a few bomb squigs before, but it was maybe two, and then you get into this hallway, and it's like, well, here's nine, and here, yeah. here you can hear them, they're like, Rrr! and then suddenly over the over that little ridge or incline, you suddenly see, like, three of them coming at you, and if, pretty much if three of them come near you and explode at the same time, that's, you're dead. It, the game just basically says, well, pull out your gun, because you really need to start shooting. Yep. Not to mention, pretty much the only other enemy in this entire hallway are shooters, and they're kind of annoying, because they actually do whittle away at your health a lot quicker than you think. Yeah. As much as I love the executions, and as much of a Malay-centric universe as this is, this is a very shooting-heavy section. Yeah. But then, in the very next room, they introduce this new enemy, with, uh, I think they're called Ard Boys, which is, you know, a bastardization of Ard. But you know, they're British. Yeah, yeah, so, so they, they've got some scrap metal strapped on for armor, and they've got their own versions of chain swords. Yeah, and they, they actually do have kind of this enrage, and they do, like, when they enrage, they do a shit ton of damage. I noticed so, the one had glowy eyes and the other one didn't, so I, I guess yeah. that's in rage. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so this is uh, this is where we're going to be getting our shell, and the shell actually has a pretty interesting look about it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it, it's a I will place the it's a shrine, and I like how it's the size of a fucking minivan. Yeah. Also, it's got the this nice little phrasing over here. Yeah. It's, it's nice little it. touches like this to make you to realize like. The Emperor is really, like, 100% uh, integrated into their society. Like, yep. Espe especially into their technology. Like, everything has to be blessed and, like, sanctified. Even if it's something as simple as a bullet. The bullet is, like, this huge religious symbol ready to, you know, pour purge all the Xenos. Yeah. And you'd think they'd have a machine for loading this, but... For this, Sidonis. I guess they figured Space Marines would be here, they'll be fine. Or the orcs destroyed it, or something. Yeah, I... May, maybe normally there's like nine servitors, which... I, that's like that's like the little helpers for the tech priests, right? Yeah, servitors. It, it, it is cool that you push a bullet the size of a minivan like it ain't no thing, but... It may, it, the logistics it of this operation are quite questionable. Yeah. Really, I mean, really, the the size of this overall gun is just monstrous to me. 
but you know that, yeah. that's, that's the world of 40k. It's uh, it's a little bit over the top. Yeah, I I really do enjoy how they manage to capture the aesthetic of the universe. But thinking back on like the size of this building, it's big compared to us, and it was built for dudes who were like four feet shorter than we are. So this place must be absolutely gigantic to them. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of weird that really the only sense of size you have for a space marine are sometimes like Imperial Guard. But, you know, normally they only look like they're maybe six feet tall, but actually they're actually a lot taller than that. They're like eight feet, I think. Yeah. Uh, before, when you were running around in some of the bunkers for the guardsmen, you could see that they were sized for guardsmen and you could tell how big you were. But here, there is very little indication of size. Yeah, well, I think that's due to the fact that, you know, there's probably a lot of stuff that has to be transported through these lifts. Lifts. I think I think normally these aren't just, like, you know, I don't want to say people lifts, because that makes me sound like I'm five years old. Is this a people lift? <laughs> like, but, yeah, I think, it, I think it's normally used for transporting I, I... large amounts of boxes and things like that. Yeah, I, I guess it carries cargo or servitors. Yeah, I I do want to quickly explain like a servitor is probably the saddest thing ever because the Adeptus Mechanus will sometimes take prisoners and scoop out their brains and they'll make people into almost just kind of mindless robots to do menial tasks. Yeah, and they do that because artificial intelligence is illegal in the universe and it has been since before the Imperium was invented. But yeah. no one really knows why, so they just keep they just keep it up for tradition's sake. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's kind of a bummer, I suppose. Yeah, the what they do to get around that is very depressing. Uh, well, it's better than having but, what was it? Is Armageddon that prison planet? I'm, I'm trying to rem uh, I'm trying to remember. There was like. There, there's like one of the IG worlds that's just massively, it's pretty much just constant rioting. I want to say it was Armageddon. Uh, I... Ar Armageddon was a, it was a forge world. Mm. I'm not sure what I'm thinking about then. I, I guess I should quickly explain the, the actual mechanics of this uh, vengeance launcher that I've been using so much. It, uh, it actually it fires plasma grenades, which it's a bit odd to me. Uh, plasma weapons are, are still kind of sparse in 40k, especially for the Imperium. They, they do have ways to harness some plasma energy, but plasma grenades, when I hear that, I normally think Eldar. So, actually having a weapon that consistently fires plasma grenades is a bit weird. And I don't, I don't even know if they, they do normally ha have like a, a hand-thrown plasma grenade. Uh, I don't think they do in the tabletop, but uh, plasma weapons in in general are sort of well, they're they're widely deployed, but they're not really replaceable. There's just a lot of them laying around. Yeah. So I mean, the the weapon is weird in that sense. Also, Space Marines don't really have a grenade launcher. They no. uh, uh, at least in the tabletop, I think. Yeah, it's, it's very much an Imperial Guard weapon. Yeah. I can see why they put it in here, but for someone who cleaves more faithfully to the background of the universe, then it might be a bit jarring. Yeah. And then there, there's the actual mechanic of the fact that you can fire, like, you control when the grenade explodes. Because I know some people are just like, tooltips, what's that? But yeah, you can actually set up, like, time grenade explosions and take out a lot more guys. But hey, we got another magical piece of paper. Yep, parts the mode. It's, uh, it's, it. it, it's from the Primark Max Payne. It allows us to slow down time magically. And uh, I don't... Uh, this Even more so than Fury, I don't know how this really would work. I, uh, I, I think you could get maybe like an eye implant that would allow you to do something similar to this. But uh, I don't think there. I don't think you could actually just suddenly slow down time as a space marine. Clearly, Titus is a latent psyker, and this is all in his head. 
as he yeah. gets as he gets more physical uh, then we put it back. proof of the yeah. Emperor's love, the his mind blue. powers get better, so he can turn invincible or slow down time. Or yes, secretly by, by the end of the game, he's going to be the new Ultraman Primark. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> it, they, they realized that um, there was nothing special about uh, Gulliman. Is that his name? I, I, I don't ever, know. I always uh, pronounce it like Robert Goulet. I call him Robo Girly Man, but I guess if you wanted to <laughs> try to pronounce his name, I guess it would be Robo Gilman or something. I'm bad at French. I, I think I think one of the Space Marines says it in the next video because that's another one of those things where they really had to bring up like oh yeah this is a 40k game we need to remember to, to put in 40k uh, terminology so I think they actually do say the Primarch's name but they don't ever explain who he is it's just one, a dude yeah just one of the Space Marines just kind of ex exclaims like oh by Gulliman's beard or some shit like that Emperors by cuspid valves. By the golden throne, who are you? <laughs> yeah, uh... They have shiny toilets in the Imperium, apparently. Yeah, I, I do have to post that picture of, like, the, the orcs uh, commandeering the golden throne and using it as, like, their own little tank. <laughs> I love that image. Yeah, but, uh... So, the, the entire point of this was we... Uh, I guess we were a bit worried that the orcs might throw the bullet off of its, uh, of its uh, pathway up to the gun, and I guess it actually was, so I guess it was good we followed the bullet. So we now have to protect uh, Leandros while he pushes the bullet in, and we get pretty much barraged by quite a few orcs. It's a, it's a, reasonable, it's a reasonably large you know, wave of orcs. Sadly, a lot of them are shooters, so... Yeah, there is a metric ton of them. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, the marksman mode can be good. It's just, it drains your fury so quickly. And it has to, like, you actually have to not be zoomed in before you turn on your fury and then zoom in. So you, you, you're you wasting... I know it may not seem a lot, but you're maybe wasting about three or four seconds of your fury. But right now, you only have like 15 seconds, so that's yeah. that's a reasonably good portion. Yeah, this section definitely could have been designed a little bit better. Yeah, but thankfully, it's uh, it's pretty much over now. That actually wasn't too bad. And all we need to do is rush out the door and... Well, first I, I had a supreme hatred of that one guy for some reason, so I had to kill him. Of course. And while we run out, let's not look at the explosions or anything, because we're too cool for that. I, I have heard that cool guys don't look at explosions. And what are space marines if not cool guys? And he turns around anyway. I guess it's not as cool as we thought. They're definitely not eunuchs, we learned that much. But yeah, um, you know, that's the end of the Gun Factory. That's the end of this update. I want to thank Congress for joining me. It was nice to be here. Yeah, and we'll see you next time for more Space Marine. All right. Take care.